Hi, my name's Jay, and I was asked to speak about how we each kind of go through struggles, and yet we all have a path to follow. It is individual to ourselves, and we are not just meant to blindly step. We are meant to, yes, walk in faith at times, but to do what we are asked to do. And to be open to understanding what that is and what that means. My number one priority is to try to seek the spirit and understand what my role is. My personal role. What J. What what there is for me. And that is of utmost priority. I'm not a fan of autopilot and kind of a default of this is what you always do. I think we need to engage in our lives and not be AI, not be autopilot, not just follow for the sake of following, but do things with intention, with clear connection of what we need to do next and engage in that and be willing to ask for guidance and follow that guidance and know that what what's right for someone else or a lot of other people might not be right for me. I have had a few exceptions in my life. I had a situation where um, I was inspired by the spirit to not wear my seatbelt that day and it saved my life. I am somebody who has always kind of found that I'm not seeking the exceptions to the rule, but sometimes they seem to find me. And I don't always know every answer, but I am willing to look a little deeper than a lot of people are and say, is there another perspective here that I might not have automatically looked at had I just been an autopilot? had I not truly connected with spirit. And when I was growing up, we had a lot of multiple choice tests. And um, at one point I was told, if you're not sure, go with the answer C. And I don't know why I'm kind of connected to that, but obviously you can associate C with the word Christ or clarity. You can also associate C with the other concept of S-E-E. It's not C as in the letter C, but C as in look. And sometimes I think we need to look more, whether it's in the media and the story about Israel going to war. Yes, there are people on both sides that are having conflict and causing conflict. But I would wonder if it's, hey, we are the victims here. And how much we need to look at the whole story. I've had multiple points in my life where without gathering additional data, I would have made poor choices had I not taken the time and questioned. And I encourage you to question for you, just like, Noah wasn't told to go to Nineveh. Adam wasn't told to get the golden plates uh, or, you know, the Ten Commandments. For each time, we are told something that we need to learn, a message for just us. And I think it's really important to be open to that message and aware and see And look for things that are just for us because each of us has a calling. Each of us has a purpose. And we are not alone. There is a spirit there to guide us if we are open to learning from it and studying out our options and really looking at other perspectives. I grew up in a church situation where I assumed certain things were true. And I have since learned that 
not all of those things that I believed were true are. I have seen people who were higher up in the church make some very poor decisions and that on some level, a church and many churches are much more about a corporation and protecting their growth than they are about people or Christ or love or compassion. And I would encourage each of us to seek to look at the big picture. And I'm not saying in any way that you shouldn't have a church or shouldn't seek a community of common believers. But there is a part of it that I would encourage you to keep your eyes open, to keep your heart open, to be willing to learn something different than you already knew. Because our lives are about progress and growth and learning. They are not supposed to be simple. If we have gifts and talents, we are supposed to use them and multiply them. One of my favorite parables is about 10 talents. As you know, in the scriptures, it talks about how the the master essentially went away and gave one of the servants five talents. And at this point, talents were gold coins. And one of them, two talents. And one of them, one talent. And they were asked to multiply them. And the master went away and then the master came back and said, you know, what have you done with the talents I gave you? And the one who had five had invested it and multiplied it and made it 10. The one who had two invested it and multiplied it and made it four. But the one who had one didn't feel like he had enough. So instead of investing it, he didn't use his talent wisely. He dug a hole and he buried it. And if we're hiding our talents, we're not developing our talents, we're not seeking to grow and learn, then when the master comes back, the one who had multiplied the five and made it ten was told, well done, all good and faithful servant. The one who had two and multiplied it to four was told, well done, all good and faithful servant. And... The one who had one, who buried it, he said, you know, I could have at least got interest had I sent it to, you know, the, the bank, essentially. You didn't do anything with it. I'm going to take it away and give it to the one who had 10. Because instead of using it, instead of challenging yourself, you just buried it whole and tried to protect yourself and protect it. And it's not about staying where we are. It's about growing and learning and building and progressing. And life is not always fair. Some of us are given five talents and whether that's monetary or whether that's gifts or whether that's, you know, connections with the spirit, whether that is five talents or two talents or one talent. We are all asked to multiply it. We are asked to progress it and grow it and develop. And as we do that, we will be blessed. But we need to take the initiative to grow, to learn, to progress, and to look around at options that are potentially wise options. Had it at least been invested and lost, there is a part of, yes, we want to take smart risks, but we all have to take a chance at some point and not just hold back and only do the things the way they've always been done. We need to take the opportunity to progress ourselves and learn 
how we can grow and progress. I know that for me, I have felt alone at times when I've kind of not followed the rest of the group. I know that I have been shamed or shunned at times. Um, I've been told that I'm not good enough or that I'm doing something wrong. But when I follow the Spirit, I know that I am rewarded greatly for it. And each of us has that opportunity. And it's, it's scary sometimes. It's a bit uncomfortable at times to be told that you're not doing it the way it's always been done. But we are asked to grow. And sometimes that means making changes. And I encourage you to be open to the spirit and the changes that can come as we seek to see as the Lord sees and to grow and to take chances and know that while we feel alone, we are not alone. We can be connected through spirit and through community and know that there are others like us Even though we don't see them, we must work as individuals and as a community to progress to a point where we can understand what we are called to do. There are both individual callings and group callings. And sometimes we have to step away from the group. So know that you are not alone. There will be struggles. There will be challenges. There will be difficulties. But as you pray and seek to understand the spirit and are open to the guidance and have faith and are willing to go and do the things the Lord commands, you will be blessed. It doesn't always make sense. It is not always easily understood how protection comes. You will not always see it coming, but it is there. And it is available to you as you seek to understand the spirit and follow that guidance and direction. Each of us has gifts, and we are asked to use them and multiply them. There are the seven deadly sins, and I will tell you that I look at people sometimes and I'm like, wow, they have something that I don't have, whether it be a gift or money or whatever it may be. And we do need to remember to use what we are given to multiply. It's not about being out of control and angry and taking what is someone else's. It's about using what we have and being happy with it to progress ourselves. And as we do so, we can avoid the downfalls that come with sin and be at peace with what we are asked to do as individuals. There are so many blessings available to us if we continue to seek the will of God and understand who we are as children of God. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.